This lesson deals with a band stop or a notch filter. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 6 starting on page 15. Let's move the L and C across the load and let's solve for V out over V sub S in the frequency domain. Because this current is the same as this current, we have a voltage divider. So this impedance is J omega L and this is 1 over J omega C. And then divided by the sum of that with R. So R plus J omega L plus 1 over J omega C. Let's multiply numerator and denominator by j omega c. Multiply this term, you're going to get the cancellation of j omega c, you just get equal to 1. And then j omega c times j omega l is going to give me a j squared, which is a minus 1. Omega squared, l times c. Same in the denominator. Multiplying through by j omega c, I get a 1. Multiplying this term, I get the same omega squared lc. And then lastly, I get j omega rc. The general form of a bandstop filter looks like this. It's 1 minus omega squared over omega naught squared divided by 1 minus omega squared over omega naught squared plus j omega over omega naught q naught. We're factoring our equation into two constants, omega naught and q naught. And if you do that, you can interpret the Bode plots and likewise the circuit. So I'm going to solve for omega naught and for q naught, but our denominator is the same as it was for the band pass filter. And we actually get the same results. We get that omega naught is 1 over square root of LC and the q naught is 1 over R square root of L over C. Let's solve for the magnitude versus frequency. We're going to take 20 log of the numerator divided by the denominator. We're going to take the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared square root. But the imaginary part in the numerator is zero. It's going to be the square root of the real part squared. And I left it in this form because this number is always going to be a positive number independent of what happens inside here because we're squaring it and then square rooting it. We're going to take the real part and square it, take the imaginary part and square it, and then square root. And for this particular circuit, omega naught is equal to 1 over square root LC, and Q naught is 1 over R square root L over C. There are many different types of bandstop filters. This is just one. Let's look at plotting this. Just like the band pass filter, we have two constants, omega naught and Q naught. So let me let Q naught equal a specific value and solve for our magnitude body plot in terms of omega and our other variable. We'll be looking at ratios of omega to omega naught and then plotting the magnitude of our output over input. Now when omega equals omega naught in the denominator, we get one minus one squared, so this term drops out, and we have some number here. But in the numerator, we just have one minus one, which is zero, so it's gonna be 20 log of zero, which is minus infinity. If we plug in omega equals 10 omega naught, then this ratio becomes 10, and then we're gonna square it, subtract it from one, and then square it and square root it. So we're going to get a number there. And then the denominator, same thing. We're going to have 1 minus 10 squared squared plus this ratio, depending on what the value of Q naught is. Here it's equal to 1. So we're going to get omega over omega naught equal to 10 and squaring that. That turns out to be very close to 1. It's a minus 0 0.044 dB because this term is much, much bigger than this term. So it dominates the denominator. So we're very close to 1. And even more so, if we were let omega equal 100 omega naught, it's equal to minus 0. 0.00004 dB. Remember, 0 dB is equal to a gain of 1. If you go to a tenth omega naught, you get similar results here, 0. 0.044 dB. And then 1 one hundredth, just like this one, a minus 0. 0.00004 dB. So we have a gain of 0, which is minus infinity dB at omega equals omega naught. And then as you go lower in frequency, you approach 0 dB. If you go higher in frequency, you also approach 0 dB. And here's this notch. That's the other name for the band stop filter. But we're actually stopping one frequency. We're actually getting a gain of 0. This is the actual curve with the dotted line. And we can just approximate this with two asymptotes of 0 dB per decade above and below omega naught. You let Q naught equal 10. The numerator is still 0 when omega equals omega naught. So again, we get a gain of minus infinity dB. But now at 10 omega naught, we're even closer to a value of 1. It's a minus 0.00044 dB. And then for 100 omega naught, 0 0.00004 dB. We're getting a sharper curve here. Likewise, if you go the other way, 0.1 omega naught, it's 0.00044 dB, just like this one. And then for 1 one hundredth, it's minus 0 0.00004 dB. Likewise here, much sharper curve. Just like the band pass filter, the higher the value of Q naught, the sharper the curve. But it still does that same function at omega equals omega naught.
Let's again interpret our circuit and our Bode plot to see if they're telling us the same things. As omega is approaching zero, we were approaching a gain of zero dB. And what that means is that the output equals the input. If we let omega approach infinity, we again see that the gain is approaching zero dB. That's again telling us that V out equals V sub S. How does the circuit do the same thing? So let's go back to page 15. Let's take a look at the circuit. When the frequency gets lower and lower, the inductor looks like a short circuit and the capacitor looks like an open circuit. No current flows because of that open circuit, so there's no drop across this resistor. Zero current times R is zero, so the rise in voltage is V sub S, the drop is zero, and the drop is V out. V out equals V sub S. As omega is approaching infinity, the impedance in the inductor, which is J omega L, is also approaching infinity, so it's approaching an open circuit. The capacitor is one over J omega C, so as the frequency gets higher and higher, with respect to omega naught, this impedance gets smaller and smaller, almost like a short circuit in the limit as omega approaches infinity. Again, we have an open circuit now due to this term, so no current flows. The drop across here is zero, so the output, this node voltage, equals the same as this node voltage. Let's take a look at when omega equals omega naught. That's our resonant frequency, and we get a short circuit, and that makes the gain go to zero. Let's do that mathematically, back on page 17. Since we have the same expressions that we had for the bandpass filter, we're going to get the same results, that Z sub C at omega equals omega naught is equal to minus J over the square root of L over C, and that Z sub L is equal to plus J square root of L over C. In other words, the same magnitude but opposite sign. When you add these two together, we get zero ohms, and we basically block the signal by shorting the output. Let's take our same circuit we did for the bandpass, but let's put the resistor here and the L and C over here. We get the same value of F0 because we have the same value of L and C, 5.03 kilohertz. And the value of Q0 is the same as 1 over R squared to L over C. It's about 10. Let's use the same value of voltage we did in one of our bandpass examples where I've got a 10 volt sine wave at a frequency of 503 hertz and at a frequency of 5.03 kilohertz. We get the same picture again. Here's the low frequency signal at about 500 hertz. And here's the higher frequency signal at about 5 kilohertz. Here's the output of our circuit, and you can see here the two sine waves added together, and slowly we get the 503 hertz signal coming out. I had measured the period, it was 1.987 milliseconds, and the reciprocal of that is 503 hertz. In predict this with our Bode plot, our Q naught is about 10, and if we go back one decade from the notch, our gain was about 0 dB. The 503 hertz signal sees a gain of 0 dB, or a gain of 1, and our 5 kilohertz signal is right at the notch frequency, and it sees a gain of minus infinity dB, which is equal to zero. This notch filter has blocked the single frequency and has let the other frequency through. Now there's also a phase angle associated with our answer. I haven't shown that yet, in fact I won't, because it's fairly simple. When the frequency is below omega naught, we're approaching a resistive circuit, and the phase angle is zero. When you're above omega naught, the same is true, you're approaching a resistive circuit because of the open circuit of our L and C and the angle is again zero. And at the notch, the gain is equal to zero, which has an angle of zero. Now the actual plot has a little wiggle as you pass through omega naught, but it's not real significant. And this is a band stop or notch filter. 